Hi everyone. So the goal of this video is to understand the different types of energy. So your learning target is to describe and differentiate different types of energy. There's a few ways I'm going to be looking for that. Uh, can you list at least five different types of energy? If you're given a scenario, can you identify the type of energy and write a sentence explaining how you know? Or if I give you a type of energy, can you describe that energy and give me an example? And then finally, if you can write a few sentences explaining how two different types of energy are related to each other or have some way of overlapping. All right, so let's talk about all the different types of energy. This is just a quick snapshot of many different types of energy that you'll see in our world. So uh, mechanical energy, that is actually two different types of energy rolled into one. There's kinetic energy and potential energy. Those actually show up right here, kinetic and potential. Those two together can be clumped together to form mechanical energy. So it's common when we talk about machines to talk about kinetic energy or potential energy. Something could be moving to give it kinetic energy or something could have some potential, so therefore it has some potential energy. Uh, thermal energy related to heat, nuclear energy related to special molecules that can give off energy. Uh, chemical energy is pretty much all molecules that can give off that can give off energy. Electromagnetic, light, sunlight, things like that. Um, sonic energy, energy from sound. So there's many different types of energy and this is just a snapshot of all that. Uh, here's another little diagram that gives you many different types of energy and it gives you some specific examples. So mechanical energy, again anything that's moving or has like the potential to move. So maybe a frog, when it's about to launch, it's got a lot of potential, it's got its muscles ready to go, and then when it launches, it becomes kinetic energy. Uh, thermal energy, again, anything related to like temperature and heat, so something that might be melting um, is probably experiencing some change in thermal energy or the heating up of, of some kind of food. Uh, electromagnetic energy, again, light, and that includes many different types of light or many different, um, you know, what they call like this electromagnetic spectrum. So there's radiation, there's radio waves, there's x-rays. Those are all examples. Electrical energy. So not only what turns on your lights and what goes through power lines, but also lightning. Lightning is a form of electrical energy or static electricity. Anything where there's ions being changed or there's a positive and a negative side that would involve electrical energy. Chemical energy could be food that we eat or striking a match. Uh, again, the food that we eat is a bunch of molecules and really just another way to say molecules is chemicals. And so when we eat food, those chemicals can be broken down and used for energy and we use that for our energy. Uh, and then nuclear, I mean, the best example of nuclear energy is the sun. It's actually, it gives off electromagnetic wavelengths. It gives off light but the way it actually makes that light or what's really coming from the sun is hydrogen and helium uh, kind of combining to form different atoms. And that combination creates a lot of energy. All right, so let's break down all the different types of energy and I'll give you a bunch of examples. Kinetic energy is energy related to motion. So any object that's moving, we see things like that in our everyday world, I think is one of the easiest types of energy to understand because anything that's moving has kinetic energy. So you can think of lots of different examples and it really comes down to two things, mass and velocity. And there's even this simple equation for kinetic energy where it's one half times the mass times velocity squared. Uh, so if you knew those characteristics of an object, then you can calculate its kinetic energy. Potential energy is related to position. So you could have elastic potential energy, like a bow and arrow, uh, shown in this diagram or this picture here. Gravitational potential energy is when you have something above some level and because of gravity, it has some potential energy. So in this case, this car here has gravitational potential energy uh, because it's up on a hill and it could go down this hill and that potential energy would get turned into kinetic energy and it would start to move. Um, and gravitational potential energy comes down to three things, mass, gravity, and height. So when you look at this equation, you basically just have to multiply your mass times your gravity times your height 
to get the potential energy of an object. Thermal energy is energy related to heat transfer. So when you cook an egg or when you cook anything really, there's some change in temperature, there's some exchange of heat. Um, when hot water goes through a pipe and the pipe gets hot, the hot water has made the pipe get hot. There's some transfer of thermal energy. And then we can even get thermal energy from our Earth. So geothermal energy, which is something that you hopefully will learn about this unit and maybe apply to your project, is the idea of, of capturing the heat that's underground and being able to use that to create energy. All right, chemical energy, uh, energy stored in molecules and atoms. So uh, a common one that we, that we use in our everyday life, it's ubiquitous throughout society, is gas. Gas or coal, things like that that we can actually burn and those chemicals are burned and it releases a lot of energy. So the gasoline in your car, um, this is actually a really good diagram of it, where it, you're pretty much burning that gas and it, it, it's pretty much like a little explosion and it powers your pistons in your car to make your car go. So gas in a car, burning the fossil fuels, food, and then the classic example that students love is when you put Mentos in a Coke bottle, uh, that's a chemical reaction, and so that's chemical energy being released. All right, electromagnetic energy, again, we mentioned this before, but it's pretty much just energy from light. Uh, so the sun is a really good example, a microwave, x-rays, these are all things on the electromagnetic spectrum, and therefore they have electromagnetic energy. All right, and then nuclear energy. So it's energy within atoms and molecules. So a nuclear reactor can use special radioactive atoms to use uh, nuclear energy to create like electricity. Um, so one thing I'll, I'll mention now is we're never really creating energy. The only thing we're really doing is we're taking energy from one type and we're converting it to another. And that's actually gonna be the crucial point to your next lesson. But I wanna point that out. So. With nuclear energy, you're taking the energy within some radioactive elements and then you're maybe converting that energy into something else. A nuclear power plant basically takes that energy and, and uses it to heat up some water and then the water can go through this other complicated process, eventually making electricity. Um, this is how a lot of power plants work, so there's a lot of energy conversions that happen. That's actually another little preview uh, to a future lesson about efficiency and energy transfer so but those are just some different types of energy and so i want you to know those types of energy know some examples and then when it comes to your project i want you to be able to think about how are these types of energy related to a school how might you use some of these types of energy for your school and things like that all right well with that being said good luck